Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to part two on Are Gas Cookers Dangerous? So if you've not seen part one yet, why not? But if you have missed part one, let's have a quick recap. Okay, I'm now going to slowly drop my glass lid down. And that ring should go out, which it has done. Now, first thing, on your cooker needs to be a nice blue flame. Okay. If it looks like that, that's keeping off deadly carbon monoxide. Now let's stop messing around and waffling and let's get on with part two on Are Gas Cookers Dangerous? Now, besides the glass lid, another safety device the hob can have is what's called a thermocouple. So this little thing sticking up here is the thermocouple. This is the ignition. Now the thermocouple is connected to the thermoelectric device. So what would happen is, if the flame gets blown out, then this will cool down, stop making an electric current, which is between 12 and 30 milliamps and would knock the gas off. Not every cooker has thermoelectrics, but I think most of the new ones do. Now, if you live in a multi-occupancy building, so that's a block of flats or masonettes or a HMO, um, since 2008, the cooker has to have these safety devices. Now, if it doesn't have the safety devices and the cooker was, is older than 2008, then it's just advisable to get it changed. Um, so, a gas engineer would have to do a risk assessment to say whether they think uh, it would need changing or not. So, um, how do they work? So, let's just put this back together. So, what I would do is I would turn it on. So we've got it on high rate. Now normally I would do this on low rate, but I'm going to leave it on high rate so you can see this happen. So what we would do now is we would blow out the flame and time how long it takes to knock off. Now it should knock off within 60 seconds. If it doesn't, then this makes this appliance ID immediately dangerous because the safety device is not working. So you can hear the gas coming out. Well, that was uh, a lot quicker than 60 seconds. And I can test and see whether this is passing now by just pressing the ignition and it's not lighting. So that gives me confidence that that has passed the test. So that's another safety device what you'll find on cookers, thermoelectrics. Remember, they're not on every uh, cooker. And if you are going to check your cooker to see if you've got them, the easiest way is if you take your finger off and the gas goes off when you press the button in there's every chance that's a thermoelectric device because you have to override the device to make it work so press it in to light it and then if you have to hold it for a few seconds before you let go that proves you have thermoelectrics or when the rings are cold you can just remove the rings and you can see whether you have the little, uh, for the want of a better word, sticking up bit. <laughs> so that's ignition, that's thermoelectric. Now, this is one of the things I keep encountering on my little trips out with the trainees when we do portfolio stuff. Silver foil on top of the cooker. It's a massive no-no. And I'll explain why it's a massive no-no. First of all, let me just remove this here. This here is where the air comes in for combustion. So we've got pre-air comes in here and then this post-air keeps it stable here. So 50% of the air required for combustion is going down there. We just covered that. That's one thing. Also, have you noticed that 
the actual ports are higher than the base of the hob and that's because if anything spills over it's got somewhere to go the only place if something spills over here where that's going to go is inside where the injector is so you're going to end up filling the injector with water rather than protecting it and the other thing is if you've got automatic ignition and you press the button and you've got silver here it makes this live as well <laughs> so it can pop when it's, uh, when it's going so don't cover your cooker in silver foil you might think it's a great idea because it stops you cleaning it but it's not a great idea and it should not be done at all so um, you've been warned now this is also one of the worrying things we see a lot on site when we go do our portfolio visits with the trainees is the incorrect use of the ring to the size of the pan you're using so let me try and explain so this is quite a big pan and I've just put some water in here so we don't do any damage and this is the smallest ring on the actual cooker so if you just move that one out of the way so you can see it so if I light this smallest ring and I place the pan over the top now there's a couple of issues we've got here first of all you can't see whether <laughs> it's gone out or not unless you get right up close to it there okay so that's the first thing so it could have gone out and you couldn't see it and the next thing is you're actually restricting the air going in to the flame on the post air so you do not get a stable flame now hopefully if I move the pan you'll be able to see the flame being unstable so can you just see it there and if I move the pan you can now see it's a stable flame so you can see I'm cutting off the oxygen there and the post air which is kind of starving it of oxygen and if I move it away you can see the flame then gets the post air and works tickety boo so that's why you don't put the big pan over the small ring so that's the first thing using a small ring on a large pan which we see quite a lot so that's one problem turn that off, move that out of the way. The next problem we've got is if I light this ring so this is the biggest ring on this cooker and I put the pan over there and it's actually going over the side okay so that's another, this is the smallest pan I've got, I could have done with a smaller one to explain this but there you go and the other thing is leaving the handle sticking out that's dangerous you need to look at sticking the handle to the side there and if you are melting and scorching your pan handles that's a good indication that you've got it on the wrong size ring so you don't have the actual gas lipping around the side that shows you're on too big a ring and if you can't see the ring you can't see the gas burning then you're on too small a ring so make sure you choose the right size ring for the right size pan it's not rocket science guys next thing I want to look at is the actual seal in the oven now this oven has got a seal but at the top here there's a gap that's important okay that's a manufacturer's gap so not all cookers have the seal going all the way around because it needs to get air in for combustion so the manufacturer has certain seals uh, different types some of them do go all the way around some of them have the seal missing at the bottom but you need to check the seal and make sure it's working so the easiest way of doing that is get a piece of paper shut the door and if you can feel resistance 
then you know you've got a seal. Now obviously we've got to watch the lock in the door. So you can see that side's got resistance. That's got resistance and you even need to check this side. So you can feel this resistance and, it, and it's important that you check that because the heat could be escaping out through the sides and we don't want that. The heat needs to come up through the, technically it's the flue up the back. We'll have a look at that later. There are also safety devices in the oven and there's two different types of safety devices. There's a liquid vapour and there's a thermoelectric. Now, uh, without going into too much detail, if you're not a gas engineer, uh, that all depends on how the actual cooker fires up. If it's a liquid vapour, it will light in low rate first before it goes to high rate. But if it's a thermoelectric, it will light in full rate. I've done a full video on the safety controls for cookers, so if you are a gas engineer, then you can go over and check, or a trainee gas engineer, you can go over and check those videos um, to see how exactly how they work. Now, this is the most important part. Now, if you have read the reports on these tragic deaths of these people, and my condolences go out to the families of these people, it's something that should never happen in this day and age, but obviously accidents do. So, um, yeah, but it's the grills, okay? Now, this cooker, or this oven, is exactly the same as the one we've just been looking at. You know, the one with the silver foil on the top. But, this one still has its safety devices working correctly, and it's a fully working grill. Now, first thing is, I don't know of any cookers out there, or ovens out there, where if it has a grill built in, this has actually got a top oven and a grill, so that you can use them with the door closed. I don't know of any. There may be some out there which I've never seen, but the, the door should be always be open when you're using the grill. Now, if we open this, there is a seal around here, okay? And that seal is for the top oven, not the grill because the grill door needs to be open. Now you can also see there's a piece of glass here and this piece of glass is important because if you have a glass door on the outside and that glass is missing then it's dangerous because a little kid could stick to it. Never mind a little kid, an adult could stick to it as well because that glass could get that hot. If they touched it they would get burned. So that glass is important. So if that glass is missing your cooker's dangerous. Now, if I turn this cooker on and open the door, you can hear it's fan assisted. And it's fan assisted on the actual oven, top oven and the grill. So there's a little lever here which activates the fan, but what it also does is it turns off the grill. Now, if I turn this grill on and light it, it's lit, and I close the door slowly, you will see that the actual grill went out and the fan went off. So the safety devices are fully working on this top grill, because if I close the door by accident on the grill, it will knock off. Okay, and when I open it back up, it starts, but there'd be gas still coming out of there, I've turned it off and I'd have to relight it. It's also important guys that your ignition works. Now technically is your ignition not working dangerous to the gas regs? No, because you could use something to light that. But, in my opinion, if your ignition isn't working on a cooker, you need to get it fixed. Okay, I'll buy a new cooker because it can be dangerous when your ignition is not working. Okay, so 
this is a fully working grill how it should be and how you test and make sure that it's still working let's go and have a look at the one next door and see why that one is here and why this one is incredibly dangerous so virtually got exactly the same cooker here listen so it's got the same fan operating the top oven operating the grill but what can you see missing here the glass is missing. Now when the, we actually got this cooker, this glass had a massive crack right the way through the middle of it. It was in two halves, so it had to go. So um, remember this is a training centre, so the guys have to be able to spot that this glass is missing for the reason I've just explained. Now if I light this grill, And it's now lit and I slowly close the door this time you can hear the fan goes off but the burner stays on so the safety device is not working on this grill so this grill could potentially kill somebody because with the door closed, if this glass was here, it would seal against this seal here and create deadly carbon monoxide. So, you need to check your safety devices and you need to read the manufacturer's instructions for your appliances so you know exactly what you need to test and what your cooker actually has with it. So never ever throw your manufacturer's instructions away for any gas appliance, whether it's a cooker, fire or a boiler, keep them safe because the engineers need to see that information because not every gas appliance, whether it's a cooker, fire or boiler, are exactly the same. Let's have a quick look at the ventilation requirements for cookers. So first of all, we've got appliance type, so if it's a domestic oven, hot plate, grill or any combination thereof. So it doesn't matter what you've got. Also it doesn't matter what the maximum rated input is. You will still have to go off this section here. Which is all about the room volume and the size of the permanent ventilation required. So if we have a room volume of less than 5 metres cubed. We'll need 100 centimetres squared of free air. Plus... An openable window or any other way of extraction now this opening window has to go direct to outside if you've got a conservatory built onto the back of your house then that can cause a few problems and it gets quite technical so basically if you are having a conservatory built on the back of your house it's covering your kitchen window make sure the leave the window open so it can go to outside so this opening window has to communicate direct to outside air uh, if we have a room volume between 5 meters cubed and 10 meters cubed we need 50 centimeters squared but we've got this little asterisk we'll have a look at that in a minute and we also need an openable window and if our room is greater than 10 meters cubed we don't need any permanent ventilation but we still need the openable window now if we've got a, a room volume of between 5 and 10 metres cubed, if the room has a door opening direct to outside, the no permanent vent is required, but the opening window still is, or any kind of extraction which complies to the building rates. Now, if you have a bedsit, your bedsit has to be over 20 metres cubed before you can have a cooker in it. Other than that, you can have a single ring or hot plate. You can't have a cooker if your bedsit is less than 20 metres cubed. Okay, so that's the ventilation requirements for these cookers. If you don't have these ventilation requirements, then you can't have a cooker installed. Well, a gas one, you'd have to have an electric one. So uh, that's really important and what all the gas engineers should be looking for when they're coming to service or commission or install any kind of cooker. 
Range cookers are slightly different and you should always refer to the manufacturer's instructions for range cookers um, and follow those for your ventilation requirements. So that's vents. Now last thing I want to look at is the correct installation of the cooker. Now remember you have to be gas safe registered to install a cooker and also if you look on the back of the gas safe card from the engineer it will tell you if they're qualified to fit cookers. That's the first thing. Okay now what the regulations say is every cooker requires some kind of stability device whether it's a bracket like this one or whether it's a chain like this one. So what the regulations basically say is if the cooker manufacturer has a slot in the back of the cooker then you have to use a bracket and the bracket has to be fixed to the wall and the floor and that stops the cooker pulling forward and tilting. It also is there to protect the hose and the pipework being ripped away from the wall. Okay, so that's basically what the bracket's for. As a rule of thumb, cookers with a high level grill will require a bracket, but a lot of the low level cookers can get away with the chain if the manufacturer says so. Now, first thing is the hook needs to hook into an eye which needs to be connected to the fabric of the building, not the gas pipe. You cannot connect to the gas pipe. Okay, now the other end you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Now some of the manufacturer's instructions for the cookers they say where the gas pipe comes down from the cooker if there's a bracket at the bottom and it's secure then they give you this to fit round the pipe here. But if it hasn't got this securing bracket and isn't the strongest part of the cooker then they say connect it to the side of the cooker by using what are the screws in the side and this chain is there not really to stop it tilting it's there to stop you pulling the hose out some guys say it's uh, these brackets are here if kids stand on the doors and stuff like that they're not going to stop kids climbing up on top of cookers and tipping them over okay they're there to try and prevent it okay if you really want to pull a cooker over you'll pull a cooker over so you've got to be incredibly careful and then the last thing is the hoses you've got to make sure you've got the correct hose for the correct gas so if it's an LPG cooker this needs to be an LPG hose not a natural gas one okay and the hose cannot touch the floor and there's a standard now from the floor to the center of the bayonet of uh, 750 mil but follow the manufacturer's instructions when you're installing the bayonet and again you can only install a cooker if you are gas safe registered but what it does say in the regulations the reason why this is a self-closing bayonet is so you can remove it as from the general public and you can clean underneath your cooker and remove it and then you can just put it back in and it should be fine okay so that's why these are self-closing so for the general public you are allowed to disconnect this here because this is self-closing so let's sum up and find out whether we think gas cookers are dangerous well yes, technically gas cookers can be dangerous if one, you don't get it installed by a gas safe registered engineer, two, you don't have it serviced on a regular basis by a gas safe registered engineer, or three, you don't follow the manufacturer's instructions when you're using your cooker. That's what makes a gas cooker dangerous when you don't follow those rules. So hopefully now over this Christmas period after watching these videos because you're going to be using your cooker a lot that you're now safe and ready for 2021 and beyond. And that is the end of this video on Are Gas Cookers Dangerous? So if you've liked this video why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. 
If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because YouTube will tell you when we upload videos, which is mainly Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, stay safe on using your cookers, and if you're watching this in December, happy Christmas and happy holidays, and I hope you have a fantastic 2021. Cheers guys.